directly on Alan Wake. Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry. They'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay. I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? you folks His name's Randolph I'm the manager we're looking for Rose works as a waitress down at the diner Rose sure nice girl who wants to know I'm Alan Wake the writer huh I heard on the radio you were visiting well I'll show you her trailer that Rose she's a nice girl always pays her rent on time as I was saying Al I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspapers archives this place is crazy disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and, get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zink. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. Bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. All right, that. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Well, now that that conversation's out of the way, welcome back everyone to Magius Plays Alan Wake. A lot has been happening in the in this story so far, and it's about to get a lot more complicated. But for now, we just need to follow along and try to get the manuscript from Rose. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Walking along, walking along. Getting a bunch of info dumps here. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. That's not at all suspicious. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. What? 
Ooh. Well, that's gonna leave the stain. It's coming for you, hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. And once again, we're back at night. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jacker. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Well, there are definitely some very horrible things going on here. It was a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. All right. Observe him one more time. So handsome. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Not getting there. It's dark, and when it's dark, that's when the Taken come out. And without any way to defend ourselves, we are very vulnerable. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you. Once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hey, it's Bob Steiner. What's on your mind, Bob? Well, one more, but well, uh... oh, first thing we need to do. Actually, get out and get to the car. Oh, you're gonna get it now. <laughs> God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are. And that is a what I, I'm standing right here, you goddamn maniac. That is a very unfortunate turn of events for our main protagonist. I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Well, we definitely can't go back that way, so we'll have to hope Barry can fend for himself. He's done pretty good so far, but, well, he's not exactly the brightest of fellows. Still, right now, we have more pressing things to worry about.
Unfortunately, now the light is not our friend. We need to make sure the police don't spot us as we make our way through these deep and dangerous woods. Hey, at least there's a manuscript page up ahead. Hmm. I have more of the fog blowing in, and that's not a good sign. Well... So much for the police being any match for that. Whatever it is. Well, at least we have a safe point here. And we definitely do not want to go down over the edge. Well, at least whatever this fog stuff is seems to be helping us for the moment. Then again, I'm not sure I, I would want this as an ally. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Yeah. Unfortunately, the police are in no way prepared to handle what's going on here. And ironically enough, the only one who is well suited to handling this is the writer. And here come the birds. Yay. And those are some dang nasty birds. If they can take out a helicopter like that, there's no way I want them messing with me. But uh, they definitely seem to be helping us out a little bit. And... Well, there doesn't seem to be anything there terribly interesting. But maybe there's something we can do here. Wheeler and Rose here. 
Wheeler's dropped or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whiff of eau de scotch about it, you know what I mean? Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in to take a look at both of them. Over. Gotcha. You better get them here quickly. The, uh, Fed's gonna want to interview Wheeler, over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll bet she does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Well, we're gonna out. Well, Barry's in police custody, so there's... At least a little bit of good news, kinda. And Rose... Well, there's something wrong with Rose right now. I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. Well, I guess that's where we're going next, then. Head back down the stairs and follow the trail. At least we know Barry's probably going to be well taken care of. I imagined that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. At least, if Agent Nightingale doesn't mess him up too badly. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. Fortunately for us, there's big old light right here. But first, let's see what's over here. Well, looks like an old generator, which we'll need to crank up. That was easy enough. And I need to get that light pointing in the right direction. As the generator dies. Can we get it going again? No, it doesn't look like it. Well, at least the gate's gone. Kind of convenient there, but yeah, it is what it is. That's not like we were going to be able to take that light with us anyways. So down we go. And now we need to find another light. And hey presto, there's one right here. Nothing else to help us out though. And just like that, the gates are gone. You really don't want to try to walk up and touch those. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. One, come in. Over. Well, maybe not ideal, but they're still pretty solid. Uh, they work just like the flares. just with a lot more damage. Don't have a whole lot of them though, so we're definitely want to, going to want to use them judiciously. At least until we get a real weapon we can use. Maybe here? No, more flashbangs. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat May. It's Milk Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milk? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? 
Oh, more flashbang grenades, more batteries. That's definitely going to help us out in this situation. Gather up, boys. And go on down. They're definitely very useful in taking those guys out, but still don't have a whole lot of them. Just keep moving along. Get ahead of these guys. And maybe we'll actually have something useful up here. Another supply chest. Not the best way to end this out, but it works. Kinda. Trust no one in the dark. Yeah, I'm getting that idea there. Uh, deputies are all possessed. Which makes things pretty nasty for us. Since we need to make our way through the woods and we still don't have a reliable weapon. I had a feeling y'all would be showing up here before too long. That got all of them. We just need to make our way up to the lights there. But the Taken. The Taken are everywhere. And they go down pretty easily to the flashbangs. Something tells me this guy's going to be a bit more of a challenge. Or not. I think that's going to be a good place to wrap things up for this episode. So, tune in next time as we finish out this chapter and get further into the mess that Alan has found himself in. Until then... Yes, I